In this video, I will show you how to assemble this foldable paper gripper from this printed flat template. The gripper has two tendons that you can pull on to actuate the two fingers, and the design keeps the surface of the two fingers parallel to each other as they move in and out. Now, this design is a little more intricate to fold and cut, so this one is ideal if you have access to a laser cutter or a vinyl cutter, although you can still cut it by hand, but if you're looking for something simpler, we have a much simpler design that is easy to cut by hand and then fold in a shorter amount of time, so you can find the link for this design in the description of this video, especially if you are doing this one with a classroom of students. You might want to start out with the simpler design before you move on to the more advanced one, just because this one is going to take more time to make. You'll want to start out by printing or laser cutting the template. The files for this are available and linked in the description of this video. The template is spread across two sheets of paper that we are then going to glue together just to make the gripper larger so some of the smaller, more intricate folds are easier to deal with, but you could scale the entire thing down to fit on a single sheet of paper. If you are printing and then cutting this out by hand, you will want to use scissors to cut along the exterior outline, which is the solid dark line, but there is an interior cut that you will need to do that might be easier with an X-Acto knife than with scissors, and there are a couple interior slots you need to cut, these single solid dark lines, and again, that might be easier with a hobby knife than with scissors. After cutting out the templates, which you can see here I've done by hand, including cutting out this interior parallelogram and using a knife to cut out these three slots on each half. So I have the left half, the right half, and the two tendons. The next step, you can put the tendons aside for now, is going to be to glue these two halves together, and you're going to do that along this vertical dotted line. So each half has a dotted line on it, and those lines get placed directly above each other like this, such that the dash dot lines going left to right on each side will all line up to each other. So you can take some school glue or a glue stick, apply it liberally to one surface, and then press down firmly to make sure that you glue these together, and you will always want to wait for the glue to dry before moving to the next step as you start assembling. After the glue is dried and the two pieces are attached, you are going to pre-crease all of the folds. And you'll notice that there are two different types of dashed lines. The lines that are just dashes represent a valley fold. That is a fold that you are going to fold towards you or up. The lines that are dash dots are mountain folds or folds that you are going to fold away from you or down. So there are a lot of folds. Take your time, go through and crease all of those, and then lay the entire thing flat again, and we will start individually folding and gluing different parts. So here you can see I have folded and creased all of those lines and then done my best to flatten everything out again. Next, we are going to start gluing. And the first step you are going to glue is a triangular tube with a valley fold. And there's one of these on each side of the gripper, but I'm just going to focus on one of them for now, and then you can do the other one. So, see there are these valley folds here with a T that is labeled tab, so anything little T is a tab that is ultimately going to be glued somewhere else. I'm going to fold this tab over and glue it to this surface here. So when it is glued in place, it's going to look like that, and that's going to have a triangular cross section. So, you can take either school glue or a glue stick, don't go crazy, apply a thin strip of glue to where that tab's going to go. Fold that down, hold it in place until the glue dries, and then again I'm going to do the same thing, mirror image, on the other side. Next we're going to zoom in because this is one of the trickier folds. We have a triangular fold here with these two diagonal dashed lines for valley folds. We're gonna worry about the rest of that Later, for now, we're just going to fold those two up. So you see how that forms a triangle, and then wrap this smaller tab around and glue it to the back of this piece. So here's what that is going to look like before applying the glue. From the top, I'm gonna to fold those up to form a triangle, and then fold this little tab over and glue it to the back there. And this is where, if you have them, reverse action tweezers can come in handy to hold the paper in place as the glue is drying so you can have your hands free to do other things or walk away while the glue dries instead of needing to sit here and hold it. So again, 
This is a tricky fold. This is what it looks like flat. You fold these two valley folds up like that to form the triangle shape. Don't glue this bigger tab for now. You're going to glue that to something else later. You're just going to fold the smaller tab over and glue it to the back. And then again, this is mirrored on both sides of the gripper, so I was only showing one there, but you're also going to do that on the other side. Next, you are going to thread the tendons through the two slots that are lined up with each other on each side of the gripper. So here's how you're going to do that. Hold the gripper with the printed side facing you. Take one of your tendons and thread it through one of those slots from the back. So it might be easier to flip the gripper over to get that started, but you want to make sure you don't lose track of which side is which here. So the tendon is going to come through from the back to the front, you're going to pull it through a bit, and then you're going to push it through the other slot so it goes back to the non-printed side, and this is where you are going to glue it in place. So it is very important to glue the tendon to the side of the template that is not printed, or if you had laser cut it, you're going to want to glue it to the back side that was facing down when you did the laser cut. If you get this wrong, then your tendon is going to be going through the slots the wrong way and your gripper isn't going to work properly when you're done assembling it. So again, you can see here on my finished gripper how the, temp the tendon comes through on the printed side and then goes to the back and it's glued to the back of the not printed side there. So you're going to do that as usual on both sides because this is mirrored. So if I look at it from the printed side, I have this tendon with the long part in the middle and just a little bit sticking through here that I'm going to glue. And then same thing on the other side, I'm going to thread this one through and glue it there. And this is the only part you're going to glue. The rest of it needs to be able to move, so make sure you don't accidentally glue this end of the tendon to anything. After you have glued the tendons in place, you're going to fold another set of triangular tubes that are across from the set you folded earlier. Notice how these are marked with mountain folds, not valley folds. So if viewed from the top or from the printed side, these are going to fold over to the back like this. But to do the actual gluing, it will probably be easier to flip it over with the printed side facing down and glue like this on the back. Make sure the long ends of the tendons are out of the way when you do this. You don't want to accidentally glue these in there, so make sure these stay free. So again, viewed from the back, it's just going to fold up like this. You have your part labeled tab that is going to glue down to the flat surface here just above where you previously glued the tendon. And as usual, mirror image, so you're also going to do this on the other side. Make sure you hold both of those in place and the glue dries completely before you continue. Next up, we have another trickier fold. We are going to fold the end of the gripper tip around. So see how these are mountain folds as indicated by the dash dot lines. You are going to fold this end around the back and glue it to this tab. So this should be a little easier if you have pre-creased all of these fold lines earlier. Again, you're going to, when viewed from the top of the printed side, fold that around the back and glue it to this tab here, resulting in that triangular shape when viewed from the top. And again, when viewed from the tip at the end, you have a triangular shape. So this surface of this part will be glued to this tab here. And this is again where those reverse action tweezers can come in handy. Once you've applied some glue, you can pinch that in place to hold it in place while the glue dries. As usual, mirror image, so you're also going to do that on the other side. Let's just look at that one more time, since again, this is a tricky fold. Here, what, here's what it looks like flat. These are all mountain folds, so you're going to fold all of those around the back. Glue to that tab, and you can see the final shape of our gripper starting to take place here. Next up, we're going to fold and glue this part, after making sure the tendons don't get stuck in there and we'll be making the support structure of our gripper so it can bend like this. So glue this step, wait for that to dry, and then we'll move on to the next step. Next up we have this flap here that we are going to fold back, and we are going to glue that to a tab here that should sort of already be in place depending on how you've done the other folds and creased everything. So again, reverse action tweezers can be useful to hold that glue in place as you wait for that to dry. So you can then go ahead and do the other side where again you have this flap, that is going to fold up and connect to that tab. Next, you are going to take the two tendons and thread them through the remaining two slots in the center. That will bring them out the back of the gripper so you can pull on them later to actuate the fingers. So I'm going to take this one, feed it through this slot, take 
Take this one on the other side. Feed it through this slot. Pull this through the back, and then later, after we've completed assembly, you will pull on these from the back here to pinch the fingers together. We are almost done gluing. We have just a few steps left. Next, we are going to fold the center section of the gripper, which when viewed from the printed side, you can see these are all mountain folds, so you're going to fold them away from you. Or when viewed from the non-printed side, you are going to fold those towards you. Unlike many of the other sections which have a triangular cross section, this centerpiece is going to have a rectangular cross section. So you're going to fold the walls up vertically at 90 degrees, fold the top across horizontally, and then glue this tab to the opposite wall to again form a center section with a rectangular cross section. Glue that tab in place, wait for it to dry before you proceed. Now you are ready for your final gluing step and you will be ready to use your gripper. You're going to fold the sides up each by 90 degrees and then glue them to the center support. But unlike previous steps, there are going to be three different places you apply glue here. First you have this tab, which glues flat onto the top of the center support. But you also have these overlapping areas on the sides, so you're going to want to apply glue there as well because you want this connection to be nice and strong for when you're using the gripper. So apply glue to all three of those surfaces, hold in place very firmly. You want to make sure this glue is completely dry before you try using the gripper. Do it on the other side as well, and then you will be ready to use your gripper. Once the glue is dried, you're ready to test your gripper. You might want to move these fingers back and forth and bend them to make sure that these creases are folded and everything can move easily. And then you should be able to move the fingers by pulling on the tendons, and when you release the tendon, some springiness in the paper should spring the finger back up to its original position. You can do the same thing on the other side, and then you can hold the base and pull both tendons at once to move the fingers at the same time. And again, the interesting thing about this mechanism design is it keeps the finger surfaces parallel to each other as they pinch together, unlike the simpler design where the fingers just move in an arc. So remember that this one is much easier to cut and fold, and we have a link to the video for building this one in the description of this video, but with this more advanced design, you can then experiment with it and see, for example, if it's better at gripping flat or rectangular objects because of how these finger surfaces stay parallel to each other when they move. Remember that for templates and instructions for both of these grippers, you can check out the description of this video, and for over a thousand other fun, hands-on science and engineering projects, you can visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.